All right, here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm going to show you how I created a beautiful pattern brush inside of Adobe Illustrator that I then used to create complex mandala designs with. You're going to be able to use this technique to create your own adult coloring book pages or elements that you could then use in a wedding invitation design. The possibilities are endless. The final result that you're going to be able to execute with this tutorial is actually quite complex, but the skills that you're going to need to build the brush itself are going to be quite basic. Without wasting any more of your time, let's jump into Adobe Illustrator and start building out our brushes. So here's an example of what we're going to build today. Nice little geometric design like this that we're going to turn into a pattern brush so that you could take a basic circle and with a single click, turn it into a circular mandala design. As you can see, I've built a couple of these ahead of time and the results are quite different. Okay, let's set up our new document. This is where we're going to build our pattern brush. Hit Command N to pull up the new dialog box and I'm going to create a 20 inch by 20 inch canvas. Your size canvas can be whatever you feel like, but this is what I'm going to work with. Create and then hit L to pull up the ellipse tool. Alt click on the canvas to pull up this dialog box and make a seven and a half inch by seven and a half inch circle. Using the positioning dialog up top here, we can manually center this to 10 inches by 10 inches. And then hitting Command R, I'm going to pull up my rulers and drag out guides to the center of our circle. Next, I'm going to set up a guide for my pattern swatch. So I'm going to hit M to pull up my rectangle tool and I'm going to alt click on the center guide over here. And I want to create a rectangle that's two inches wide by six and a half inches tall. I want the height to be slightly less than the height of the circle. The width is also going to determine the appearance of your brush. A thinner swatch will mean more repetitions as it rotates around a circle. So let's go with two inches for this example. And here's our rectangle. I'm going to draw out more guides from my ruler. The important guide here is the vertical center of your rectangle. And there's the top and bottom set up. I'm going to select this rectangle and delete it. That's not part of the equation. I just had that to set up my guides. So now I want to work inside of this space and I want to make sure that everything stays symmetrical from one side to the other. I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to pull up my pen tool and I'll create a line that goes from side to side. Make sure that the fill is turned off and we'll just leave a black stroke of one point along here. I can hold down Alt and Shift on my keyboard and drag out a copy and then hit Command D to transform that again a couple times. And then now what I like to do is just build in a whole series of random details. And as long as everything ends perfectly along a guide from one side to another, when you create your pattern brush, they'll line up and look like a seamless element. You want to avoid having anything that doesn't line up because then you'll end up with a gap. You definitely want to avoid anything overhanging because now that will be the outer width of your pattern and you'll end up with a gap of anything that doesn't line up. So let's make sure everything is lined up to our guides here. The other thing that I want you to consider is the top of your pattern that you create up here should be more detailed, more complex than what you build towards the bottom of the pattern swatch because the bottom of the pattern swatch will end up towards the center of your circle 
and the distortion will be greater, the compression will be greater. So it's important to have your details up top and have it a little bit simpler along the bottom. Let's create a circle in the middle here. That's cool. Let's drag out a copy and using the pen tool and holding down Alt, let's convert these anchor points to create kind of a teardrop look. We can make this thinner, scale that up a bit. Kind of looks like a nice floral element. Now, here's another use of the shape builder tool. A lot of people use this on um, solid shapes, but I, I like to use it on strokes. So there's a solid and a stroke if you select both of them. And then your shape builder over here is shift M. You can holding down the alt delete the center line there, leaving just the outermost points. Let's draw a few random elements. An alternative way to create that effect where you're bridging from one side to the other instead of deleting the middle is to just draw one of the elements by hand, like so, and then select this, and by pulling up the Reflect tool, which is O on the keyboard, and then holding down Alt and clicking on the center guide, you can reflect um, from left to right, and then just press Copy in this dialog box. So it's the, the same effect as up above here, but a different way to achieve it. Whatever you do on the left side of, of your pattern swatch, we want to make sure that we're matching to the right side so we can select both of these and reflect them again. Copy. Uh, let's take this element, delete a point, and use this line here to divide them. I like to make sure everything is lined up and there's no little gaps overhanging. So I'm going to speed up this section here where I'm just clicking and building a few random shapes. There's uh, nothing all that interesting in here. I don't want to waste too much time. The important thing here for this look is to make sure that everything stays the same. So if you select everything and make it one point stroke, just so we're consistent across the board. Let's go ahead and add in some more smaller details towards the top like I talked about. And then keep everything symmetrical, just like I talked about. Um, I'd like to add in some 45 degree angle lines in here to make it look like it's a bit of a leaf. So let's start from our center point, make sure we extend past the full width of our shape, and then Alt and Shift to constrain. Let's drag that out to there and hit Command D several times, like that. Let's select all of these elements including our base leaf here. And like I said, shift M pulls up the shape builder. And then if you just draw a line while holding down alt, you can highlight these lines that you want to remove. I don't miss that one there. Perfect. I should also intersect this one here, shift M and then alt click on the line. I want these to be symmetrical, so let's reflect them across to the other side, select all of them, press O, Alt click on the center point, and copy. It's looking cool. Now it's up to you what kind of details you're looking to add to this piece. The more complicated you get, the more complicated your end result will be. It's nice to remain consistent with theme though. So if you're 
using circular elements often. Stick with that. If you use more geometric or square elements, that's cool too. It's up to you. The fun is really when you reveal the final form. So let's finish this up here. So again, I'm going to speed through this while I finish up adding a few details in here. Um, you're not trying to match exactly what it is I'm building. You're going to make your own version. Just make sure that you keep everything symmetrical from side to side of that center guide. Also, be sure to use smart guides. Hit command U to pull that up. You see these pink lines that show up whenever I hover over an element that just help you verify that everything is symmetrical and everything is lining up. Have fun with this section. Whatever little details you add into the pattern brush will look really cool once you get it applied to the circle and build out your mandala. Okay, here we are. We've got our um, pattern swatch created and everything's looking good. Just a couple little things to consider. You want to come back in and double check that everything aligns to the guidelines that you set up. You don't want anything to overhang. That also includes circular elements. This is something that you might run into. Say you had created a circle and you had cut it like so. Because we're dealing with a stroke, if you had these points lined up here on the edge, you end up with a bit of an overhang because the stroke is finishing at an angle. So this overhang is going to interfere with the seamless nature of the mandala you're trying to create. So if we delete this and you really want a circle to um, span from side to side, it's important that you end up points that are straight like this. So this will work. The previous example that I showed you where the stroke was angled and not straight at the border um, will cause problems for you. So let's reflect this again so that we end up with the matching circle on the other side. Hit copy. The other thing that I've talked about before is you want to make sure that the stroke width is the same just so everything is consistent. So select everything and make sure everything is at one point. That's looking good. So if we select all of this and then go up here to your brushes panel and hit the options button and say new brush, we can create a pattern brush by clicking this radio button and hitting OK. For now, let's turn off the corners. We don't need those because we're working on a circle. Stretch to fit is fine. And for colorization, we can switch this to tints. If you leave it at none, then the original stroke color that you selected black will be um, how your pattern displays, no matter what um, stroke color you put into your um, stroke palette up here. So let's go to tint so that you're able to change that. And there's our pattern brush that's created. So let's take this swatch and just move it off to the side. You can save it for later if you need it. And select our circle. And with one click, we'll apply this and see how everything turned out. Just like that. You have a really detailed looking mandala that Illustrator has created for you out of the single swatch that you created. I think that's looking really sharp. This is now something that you can modify the appearance of by changing the stroke width. So thinner stroke width is going to, based on the size of your circle, leave a larger gap in the middle. So you could turn this more into a border instead of a mandala if you wanted. You had to be careful if you don't want to go too big because you'll end up intersecting a lot of the strokes that you had created. So in some cases it works, other times it will start to get too, too busy. It will reduce the number of copies that span around the circumference. Based on the numbers that we started our document with, where we had our rectangle being very close to the same height as our circle, you end up with this at the one point um, stroke size. If there were any issues that you had with your pattern, say you wanted to add in a few more details or there were some things that you didn't like, 
you don't have to start again. You can make the modifications to your little element, select everything again, and then holding down Alt, you can slide this swatch onto your pattern brush. So because you're holding down Alt, it will um, select this element and you're gonna replace it by just letting go. And then if you hit OK, you'll get this dialog box that says uh, whether you want to apply it to strokes or leave it on strokes. We're going to say apply to strokes, and it will now update everything with that extra line that you added in. So here's our final mandala. Right now it's still a live pattern brush stroke, but just to finalize everything for final delivery. I'm going to go Object, Expand Appearance. By doing that once, these elements are now um, the strokes from the original pattern. So at this point, if you needed to make them thicker or thinner, you could. But what we want to do here is take it one step further, expand it again. So it's now going to be created, or a fill is now going to be created out of your paths. And then you can use the Unite option here to create a compound path where everything is um, condensed into one element. So that's, that's it for the coloring book. If you want to print this out like this now, it's going to be usable. You're going to be able to color it in with pencil crayon or marker, and that's what we set out to do. Um, you can also use a tip from my previous Feather tutorial where you start to add color inside of Illustrator. So we can select the mandala here and copy it to our clipboard with command C. Now this version, we can release the compound path by going compound path release. And then we can apply a gradient to this. Go to our gradient dialog box and select a linear gradient. And we can hit command F to paste in front our original mandala outline. And we can make this white. I think that would look cool. And just like that, we've added uh, a color that looks really unique inside of Illustrator. You can go in and start to, using the direct selection arrow, um, select elements like this all the way around and then add another color to it just to give you some variation. But that's up to you, that's your personal taste. Let's add in a little pink there. So that wraps up another tutorial. I have to thank a viewer with the username Luxury Card Store for suggesting the topic for today's video. Hopefully this was useful to them and hopefully the rest of you will find it useful as well. At the very least, I know I had fun creating this video. The brushes that I created when putting together this tutorial, I'm gonna package them up and put them available for download on my website. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. They're gonna be free, there's no strings attached. The only thing that I would ask is that if you liked today's video, if you would consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, um, it, that support would be fantastic and I would really appreciate it. If there's any topics inside of Illustrator or Photoshop that you're having issues with, anything that you're struggling with, feel free to reach out to me either on Instagram or in the comments down below and let me know what you're having problems with and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Maybe I can put together a tutorial that solves the problem for you. Anyway, really appreciate the support guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.